Hey loves, it's Dr. Simone Ellis and I am super excited because I have one of my really, really, really good friends, one of my life coaches, we want to call her that, mentors, gets me all together mentally, physically, and emotionally, the Andrea Everline. <laughs> the Andrea Everline. Thank you so much for coming on to Beyond the Chair. I appreciate that. So I want to talk a little bit about why we have someone else that's different than dentistry, right? And my goal with Beyond the Chair is not just to talk about things that we are doing from a clinical perspective, from a healthcare perspective, but things that people do from an entrepreneurial standpoint outside of the chair to become the greats that they are. And if you know anything about Miss Everline, you know that that is a part of her mantra and her part of her mindset. So for people who do not know the Andrea Everline, mm -hmm. please talk a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you get started? What do you do? And we'll get into a little bit more conversation of mindset and mantra and all the fun things about you. But for everybody else, let's talk a little bit about you. I think it's always difficult when someone asks me talk talk about yourself because I'm I'm gonna be it's gonna be really brief. So <laughs> Okay, so do you want me to ask a specific question? Yes, please. All right, I got you. So um for everyone who doesn't know, where do you reside? Where are you from? Okay. How did you get back to Houston? Got it. Um I'm originally from Houston, Texas, um, Sugarland. Went to Dulles High School, um, college also in Texas as well. Okay. And then so moving forward and now I am um, I'm back in Houston. Um, I actually was living overseas in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh, um, working for the royal family of Saad, um, doing other projects. Wait as a well. minute. Did you just tell us that you were royal? Like you were royalty? You were working with Well, we are royal. I mean, I sure. love that. First of all, <laughs> just sitting in the chair. I know this stuff, but I mean, for anybody else that doesn't know, I think mean, that's pretty dope. And you can't just brush over that. How did that part become a part of your life? Um, <clears throat> just, well, I mean, just, I don't know, hard work um, and perseverance, I guess. But I ended up getting an opportunity to actually work with um, one, of the, one of them. And it grew from there. Mm -hmm. um, and so after that, I, I, by me being in Saudi Arabia, um, I made some connections. And um, I just started some other projects outside of um, PT work and yeah, that's how I got to Saudi Arabia, just on getting the opportunity to be in front or in the room. And then um, was chosen to, to live there for about six months. That contract lasted, and then she extended it for a year. And then after that year, she extended it again. And then it was almost like a sisterhood. Um, and at that moment, it was all about how can, what can I do to continue to help you grow? Um, that's she wanted to pour into me <clears throat> as I was pouring to her as well. Sorry. <clears throat> so, yeah, I got I got to Saudi Arabia by having the opportunity to get into a room and um, and working my way up. So I can tell from this podcast that Dre is going to be kind of humble, and so I'll <laughs> gas her up. I'll be the shell. I'll be the Exxon. I'll be the, you know, the gas to the light. Um, Drea is under... Un downplaying herself she is an amazing human and since she doesn't want to do her accolades let me help so not only did she create an opportunity and a program for the royals from a fitness perspective right yes right she came over here and i think i like to think of you as a pivot because you can pivot like you've had different things in your life where you've had to pivot you've had to you know change up the game and not only did you take something, because you weren't supposed to be here, right? You weren't supposed to be here in the pandemic. You got caught oh, yeah. here. Yeah, so February 14th, actually on Valentine's Day, I came in the day before Valentine's Day, and um, I was only going to be here for three weeks. And I was going to go back to Riyadh to continue working on the project. Um, and at that time, I wasn't training. I was actually working on, I was releasing an app. And, um, and so I was working on different projects. And so... The, we got locked down the week after I got here right. and going into March week or two. And so um, I was excited because I was like, oh, some time off. That two who knew? months, who would have ever <laughs> thought, right, um, that those two or three months would have turned into two years. Right. And so that first year I was like, okay, it's been a year. What am I going to do? And I saw that the well wasn't going to open back up. So um, I got active again. I started finding ways to be innovative 
on um, creating fitness programs for people um, that was inside of the house. And then also I started back my boot camps when we were allowed to go to parks and stuff like that, just to stay active. Not And I wanted people just to move too, and I was bored. Right. I got bored. And then um, I was like, you know what? What am I about to do with my life? And what's next for me? Maybe there's some more opportunities here in the States for me instead of me just going back and forth overseas. And then that's when I decided to open my own gym here. Um, I had an idea um, that is not fully innovated, but I am I am in the process of fully innovating it all. But um, I wanted to open up a gym, uh, which is called Refuel Fitness. And um, pretty much it was, it's a pretty cool concept. It's not just a pretty cool concept. It is the revolutionary gym. I mean, I like again, I can tell from the vibe of this podcast, I don't have the gas, so no problem. Like when you walk in, it's different. So yes. can you talk a little bit about how you even and we'll go into a lot more detail about this, but I really want to kind of get people to understand like why your gym, why your gym concept, why your your flow, your vibe is totally different than they can find anywhere else. Um, it's 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 very personal. Um, and then also I wanted to create a space for people. Um, it's a group, private group training facility. Um, and I say, and I say that with great, with great pride because I, I realized that it's not for everybody. Right. And, and what I mean by that, I'm not talking about the level of fitness that everybody's at. I'm talking about the mental space that people have to be in to actually come into this facility. Um, simply because, um, one, I challenge you to, um, put your phone away for an hour. Give me your hour give you the hour um the three pillars that i live on um i also use it in my gym so people can stand on it too is to restart rejuvenate and restore mm. and so when you walk in to refuel you first come in you're feeling the you smelling incense you, you're smelling it's almost like is this a gym you yeah. know um it has a, a, a spa feel when you first walk in and then um when you get to the floor um, the aesthetic of the gym is nice. Um, of course, there's some work now. We've been we've been running it down, but um, for the most part, I try to keep it uh, up to par. But the aesthetic of the gym is beautiful as well. You can see where I'm headed with what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's already really cool because the concept that I have for refuel is this cube, and everybody thought I put this pexy glass up because of COVID. And I'm like, no, that's not why I put the pexy glass up. But. Like, this is actually an intentional movement. Yeah, this is totally intentional. And um, what it does for you um, when you're actually in that cube, one, it makes you zone in to that cube and to your team. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've gotten out of the space of being competitive. Um, I'm an athlete. And, you know, I, I get the whole you versus you thing. Yes, when I'm in that cube, I, it is you versus you. But um, I'm an athlete, and I've never, ever showed up to a game to not loot, to not win. And so my thing is that if I see you, someone on the other side going hard, I want to go harder, mm. right? And so it's not necessarily to say I'm better than you. It's saying that you're challenging me to compete on another level that I've, I wasn't probably pushing myself. And so um, sometimes when we're looking through that plexiglass, or we're watching through that plexiglass, because we, we won't – sometimes we – we only pay attention to what's um, kind of like in our cube. But when I'm on a treadmill and I see you on the other side, it challenges me mm. to want to go harder, you know, especially. And then it's like we're kind of talking crap through the pexy glass, which is really cool. kind of. So, like, let me get let me let me back up to talk about a little bit of how I have met <laughs> Andrea and how my experience has been. <laughs> I found out about Andrea from one of my um, my colleagues at work and I had been seeing this like phenomenal, aesthetically popping, like gorgeous facility. And I was like, who is like, what is this? Like, who is like, what kind of gym is this? Because it looks different. And then you walk in and you are totally right. The vibe is a totally different, calming. And I, it's definitely a setup. Like you feel like you're getting set up because it's <laughs> calm before she before the door locks. And yeah, as soon as that the door, storm. the calm before the storm. And as soon as that door locks, you like, oh shit, what am I about to embark on? And the first time I met her, 
I'm telling her about the gym. I, I'm loving the aesthetic. And one of the funniest things that I think you do to a lot of your clients is you give them a fist bump and you're like, good luck. Like, mm -hmm. I'm about to kill your ass. And it's hilarious, but you do feel that way. Um, and so I don't want to downplay. Please, let's not do that on this because I got to give you your roses. <laughs> you got to get them. The concept is dope. The energy is dope. And that really comes, I think, a lot from who you are. And that's what I want to get into a little bit more of. Let's talk a little bit about how did Andrea Evelyn become who she is? Um, because with this podcast, I want to talk about mindset, right? Um, and how to push people's mindset to the best mm -hmm. level. And I think you do a really good a job of that. So, like, let's make a, let's, I want to know the gumbo. I want to know what gave me, like, the, the okra, the, like, what is, what is the makeup of you? Um, well, this woman has been through some stuff, right? Okay. And I think that trials and tribulations, um, it creates um, really it, my experiences that I've had in my life have cult, like pretty much created this woman that I am today. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, not not everybody has a story, and I always tell people um, no one cares about your story until you win with it, right? And so um, every day, my 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 only objective is to win the day, to focus on the day, win the day. Um, <clears throat> Play ball in college. Everybody always asks me, well, how long have I been into my fitness journey? I've been in fitness my whole life. Um, discipline and hard work it comes with who my father was, who my brothers are, who my family is. And so that discipline has always been instilled in me to if you want something, you got to get up and you got to work hard mm -hmm. at it, right? But it wasn't always pretty. Um, my mother, when my mother passed away, I was, I kind of created. My mom kind of created this beast, honestly. Oh, we're blaming moms. We're blaming uh, moms? We're blaming mom for <laughs> sure. Um, at such a young age, I had I had to get into the space of being a mother um, to my, my younger siblings. And so that leadership had to automatically, it just, I was nine, ten years old. And my mother had, was diagnosed with cancer. And so she kind of was already shaping me to be in a space of, an, like, I mean, it sucks, but it is what it is. You were an adult. This mother, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and to be responsible of my brothers and my sisters. So I think that was just instilled in me. And I would never forget the day my mother passed away. I remember my brother came outside and he said, I need you to stop crying. And I'm young. And he said, I need you to stop crying because your brothers and sisters need you. And at that moment, I created a space of um, it is what it is. Mm. Um, and I was so young, but I was like, it is what it is. I got work to do. Mm. And I think that what people see um, is something that is that comes so naturally for me um, because it is what it is. Right. I got work to do. And so a lot of you and others always think that I'm downplaying myself, but I feel like I've got so much work to do. Um, I'm not even scratching or have scratched the surface of anything that I would do. Um, this is, and I know we're already in the space of always saying this is just the beginning, but um, I don't even think I really really began yet you yeah. know I'm doing well I'm doing good um doing but exceptional <laughs> but so much work has to be put in and done right and so um what I'm grateful for that my mother taught me um was that um you protect your family you protect those that you love and that you you, you have a, a sense of integrity when you do it and so I think that's what I try to move with a lot of intentions so when I'm meeting people um this is my first time ever being this accessible to people so that's new for me. And so um, I'm taking it day by day. Yeah. That's hard. But the what I what I am experiencing is that, man, this is what my mother's always talked about. Like, you got to show up every day. And I can't complain because at first I was like, man, this is a lot. Like, people tugging on me every single day. Yeah. But um, I've been prepared for this since a, for a little girl. And... Um, like you said, life coach or whatever you want to call me. Oh, she definitely. I, I am like a best, life coach to a lot of people. Like everybody. Like <laughs> even if you don't want to worry, you're gonna get one from this Everline. Like it's gonna happen. It has to happen. Yeah, and I think that's a part of your. I mean, that's a part of your path, your your walk, and you do it so effortlessly. So I love that. So yeah. switching gears, guys, because of course we've talked about who she is. I want to talk in our segment about. What you drinking? So you know this is my favorite one where we're talking about what are you doing to like decompress? Uh, and since I am I am with my coach, my gym trainer, I, I'm doing something healthy today. I don't, I don't drink alcohol according to Perfect. the podcast. 
I just have a smoothie going on, but like, what are you drinking? What are you doing to decompress? I got you. Um, so I'm an artist, and um, which a lot of people don't know. Um, that's where the cube came from. Yeah. Me drawing and me sketching things out. But um, I love art. Um, I love live music. Live okay. music is my thing. So if even what I do to decompress is like, I, I do stuff in my house, like for as something with art or, I um, mean, when I say that, like even now, like I'm doing some moving around, moving, ch changing things out, um, just because it's, it's it's my way I decompress. Yeah, I have time cathartic. to myself, it's yeah. my therapy. And in the background, I got some good old jazz or some who we live listening music. To? Play, <laughs> play, play. Who we listening so to? So my, my my one of my one I'm listening to right now that I keep playing is um, Esperanza Sp Spalding. Spalding yes. yes. And so when I'm home by myself, of course you can't go wrong with a Usher playlist oh, either or never. you know. But yeah, I I love live music. I love instruments, and so um, that's really I don't have a lot of things that I do outside of I love being at home. Um, I love decompressing in my home and I love, love cleaning up. Love it. Yes. I've never seen somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's another thing too. If you get caught in her gym after a certain time, she's going to like, yeah. So you just still in the round like, oh, yeah, here's no Windex. But I did get you this because I know you do like to decompress in, at home. Just a little candle because you are a light and I want to make sure that you oh, have a light. So dope. I know she likes candles, uh, but love just kind of like an opportunity mm. for you to zone out. And, you know, since you're not drinking, you're not terrible. This is what gotcha. you yeah, No, so. I love candles. Everybody know I love candles. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad. And it matches my, uh, my outfit. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I just want to make sure you style and pop in all the time. Got so. It. Um, let's now get into some of the questions that I think are important about mindset because you have been able to develop a very strong mindset and you do a lot of work behind the scenes to get there. So mm. um, in our profession, especially, there's a lot of healthcare providers and it's a high suicide rate, right? It's mm. a lot that goes on. So some of the things that I have been over the period of time years is trying to figure out how do you find that balance, right? Like how do you get that nice work life balance? And that's been a struggle. Um, because of the fact that I think that you're consistently learning things about yourself, you're consistently editing, you're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And for people who are trying to figure out a path or trying to overcome obstacles, where do they start? <laughs> so I can only tell you from my experience, right? From yeah. where I started. Um, I think you got to get to a point of, and me being completely candid, of being sick of your own shit and sitting with yourself. And I always tell people, don't just sit, like, just sit by yourself. You need mm -hmm. to sit with yourself. Um, What's the difference? I can sit by, anybody can sit by themselves, be isolated. Um, that That's when thoughts take over, right? But okay. when you sit with yourself, you work through those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm sitting with myself, um, I'm, I'm, I'm editing. I am doing a lot of editing. Um, I am, I'm working through a lot of stuff that I've experienced, a lot of, um, relationships, um, that I could make better or get rid of. Um, I, I, I would personally say, what can I, I'd say sit with yourself. Like you need to do a lot of editing. Um, it's, it's and ugly. That's scary, right? It's ugly. It's scary. Mm hmm um, because you're doing a lot of purging. Um, you're leaping a lot into spaces that are unfamiliar. Um, but damn it, it's so worth it mm. um, if you really want to grow and evolve. And um, I always tell people, like, a lot of my friends, they always say, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, I want to be proud of you, too. Mm. Because we all should be evolving. Right. We all should be taking leaps. We all should be sitting with ourselves. You never stop growing. You never stop growing. I always tell some people, if I'm in the same place I am next month, get on my ass. Mm. If I'm in the same place I was last year, get on my ass. Like, I don't ever want to stop growing. I want to keep becoming, keep becoming who I am. And so I think that people are not sitting with themselves, and that's the first place you got to start. You got to sit and be in, like, with being, show up, humility and all. Yeah, you know, um, it's ugly, but the editing part is what is the most beautiful part of it, and and the reason why I say that is because when I'm sitting with myself and I'm peeling off those layers, um, I'm seeing how far I've come, mm 
Mm -hmm. Um, I'm seeing where I want to go and where I'm headed. And then, so that was a point in time in my journey to where I didn't see where I was headed. So let's Um, talk about that because I want to bring fitness back into it too because you own a gym. Like not only a gym, you own a wellness facility. Let's mm -hmm. call it that. Um, Go back to where, for people, I know I was stunned to find out like you had you had weight issues too like you didn't just get here yeah talk about that and your mindset and the obstacles that you had to overcome to sit in your shit so to speak yeah I um so my whole life has been about being an athlete I've been I was I've been an, an amazing athlete my whole entire life but after I had Spencer um just thinking your body can bounce back um I was young and I still was eating and doing what I wanted to do um kind of um Got up to about 285 pounds. Can you guys imagine her? Like, that when, like when she said, I, I was like, but no, it. I need you to show me. And then when she showed me, I was like, I don't know who that is, but that's not you. Yeah, I I, I couldn't even imagine it. Yeah. But um, that's when I started my journey. I probably was a little bit bigger than that. But I was 285, and um, I knew it was time. I was uncomfortable. Um, I, my habits were so bad. Like, not only the things that I was eating, my thought process. Mm. Um but I, I've always craved more. That, that was the crazy part about it. Like, I couldn't sit in my shit. Like, I, not too long. And that's why, I guess, for me, like, I'm blessed that God put me in that space. Because it, there's always some people that's, like, obese. And um, they'll come, they're overweight. And they're like, you don't understand what I'm going through. And I always have to let them know, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I've been in your shoes before. Not... And this is the deal, like, because I've been an athlete my whole life, yes, I knew how to fight back. But I had a period in my life to where I was like, is this, am I really going to get this weight off? So what was the switch? Like, <laughs> I don't I don't really, I, I just got tired. Like, mm. like, like I said, I've always wanted more out of my life. So when you're looking around and you're not understanding, like, why am I not growing? Why am I not evolving? Like, all my friends are passing me up, you know? Mm. Um, I think when you have poor habits, living habits, like eating habits, um, the way I was living, the things that I was putting in my body, it shows, you know? And everything around it starts showing. My Mm. friends wasn't matching what I wanted in my life because of how I lived, you know? Um, Nothing matched what I really wanted in my head. And so I had to make a decision, and I started purging. Mm-hmm. Um, I went on a 27 day <laughs> water fast, long as I've ever done in my life. And um, for people who don't know what that is, what is that? Um, so I'm I'm I am a woman. I've always my faith has never wavered, which I'm grateful for. So water fast. So if you know what fasting is, you know that um, one you're ridding yourself of food um, and to talk to God more, um, to see clarity. And um, you get to a space of being weak and you can't depend on your strength because you don't have any. Um, And you're pretty much um, praying to God and depending on only on God's strength. And so in that space, I wasn't eating anything. And so in that space- For 27 days. 27 days, I got that fed up. 27 days. Wow. I would never forget it. I got that fed up with my with my own shit to where I was like, God, I need you, and I'm not stopping until you give me what I want. Wow. And the and, idea of 27 days, the idea of being able to block out everything, because mm-hmm. I can't imagine, like, you, it, 27 days, like, you're not, you can't be around too many people because you're going to be tempted, right? Yeah, I yeah. wasn't. If I wasn't in the house, I, only time I came out was just to walk every single day. Wow. But um, I was breaking. Um, I That was like my last resort. Like, I, I was crying out for God's help. Mm. And I don't want to make this really spiritual or whatever, but I was really crying out for my life to be changed. And... Um, and it wasn't it wasn't about materialistic things or anything like that. It was just about me internally. I was mm-hmm. seeking a peace that I, I I wanted. I wanted this this undeniable sp- space of serenity and just peace and just wanted my life to become because internally I was it was so much going on. It was like rah, you know, and I just wanted to be just 
mellowed out. Yeah. And I, I remember when I was praying in, those, in that time, I did not pray for a thing but peace. Hmm. And I just kept saying, God, if you don't give me, I just need peace. I need peace. Wherever you're taking me, I don't care what it looks like. Everything else I know, you're going to give it, give it hmm. to me. But people take that for granted. Um, there's so many people that have, I saw so many people that have all this stuff in the world but don't have peace. And they can't even appreciate it. So in those 27 days, I wasn't, I wasn't looking for, my, the only thing I was looking for my life to change was in was internal, mentally. Um, and my weight, I didn't I didn't care about the weight. Because you knew that would come off. I had I that was like a you byproduct knew how to of get my, there. Yeah, yeah, that was a byproduct of what I was about to do. So you really had work. to tap into your mental, which again, like how do you for the person who's listening that is trying to figure out like how do I tap into that that mental or what are some of the things that I can do to because you can be so depressed that you can't even get to that point right like the fed up point Mm -hmm. I mean what are some what are some tips or advice that you have for those people that are like I mean I need some help I need to help I need help getting here I've worked with people that no matter what I said to them they didn't see the light Mm. right um But I, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't have like it's like giving the five step program to somebody that can't even hear you. Mm. You can't hear me. Like it's just something that like all I have to say is, all I have to say is is that your faith can't waver. Because in times when I gave up on myself, I never gave up on God. That's a different two. That's two different streets. Like I, I never ever gave up on God. Like I didn't understand it all. Mm-hmm. But I used to just cry to myself. I used to just like, I just know you're not gonna leave me. I just know you're not gonna leave me. I don't care what it looks like. Okay. So there was plenty of times like with my journey, it looked like I was giving up on myself, but I never gave up on God. Like God sustained me in my worst of worst moments in my life. And so it was scary, but the advice that I would give is like, you, you can let yourself down, but just don't, if you got any type of faith, I don't know. You just got to, you can't, because I was in a space in my life too, where I was like, people would try to talk me, talk to me, but I just wasn't hearing them. But it's a love from God. I don't know that I have. I just, that's my, if I can get people closer to God, like they see my light. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that is the way, like, because everybody's journey is very unique. Like we can't, I can't um, tell you my five-step program. Like, you got to go through your own journey. Yeah. I know that people give out 10 steps every day of how you can become successful and a millionaire and a billionaire. I, I just focus on my journey. I, I don't worry about nobody else's tips but my own tips. Like, yeah. that's it. So No, but I mean, I think that that's still it. Like, you, you put faith as a part of your and your spirituality and your connection to the Most High to make sure that you are showing up like you have somebody it's basically you have the accountability partner Mm -hmm. so to speak right um and knowing you also too you talk a lot about where you see yourself like you are very good about visualization you're very good about painting the picture um and it gets everybody excited around you because they see it too um talk me through a little bit about what that looks like like what's your process in creating your vision i know you're connected to your most high so i feel Mm -hmm. like you hear, you're very in tune with that, but then I think you also dream bigger than most, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I feel like, um, we were talking to uh, another another host or another guest on the show, and he was talking about nowadays, especially with social media, and just more of a limiting mindset. You see all these people doing these things and you almost get fearful of doing them because what the world is seeing on the social media is everything great, right? so for people who have limited beliefs or even not able to visualize where their next steps are, walk me through your process. If it, I got the confidence to believe I can do whatever I want to do. I'm manifesting my best life, right? And so um, my dreams have been told, people have told me they're outlandish. They've told me all types of crap, but I really see, I do this with you guys in class, right? Like, imagine where you were at five years ago, mm-hmm. right? If Didn't you imagine not, like, you've seen your life grow, right, in these five years? Absolutely. 
So something had to come like from that imagination, from your space of thinking like, I'm going to be better. I'm going to become better. Um, I need more. And so I think that we're all a manifesting. We all are have we all have these big visualizations or imagination of becoming our best selves, but not very people. Not a lot of people don't believe it. They get fearful of even becoming successful or even having this out this beautiful life. You know, mm. me. Why I'm, do you Why do you think that is? It's a lot of responsibility that comes with it. Yeah, it's okay. a lot. It's a lot of responsibility that comes. Imagine you being a breadwinner in your in your family. Imagine you holding the, the crown in your family. Imagine you um, being a leader in your community. Right now, imagine imagine me not only owning a gym, but also being a, a person of wisdom and route towards wisdom or um, sharing my gifts and my experiences with like people. Taking the time out to come out today. Right. Yeah. Right. So for me, people depend on that. They lean, they lean on that, right? But if mm-hmm. I keep that to myself and I say, I'm, if I'm always walking into a space of fear, or a space of understanding, like, the ceilings are my floors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've never blown a lid off of anything that I'm trying to do. So do you get fearful ever? <laughs> I don't. I think that... I think there there are times that I... In I mean, my space, to be me- completely transparent in my life right now, no. Okay. How did you get there? I just saw where I've come from. Mm. I've never, everything I've said I'm doing or I'm about to do. Anybody that's been around my journey, if I've ever said it, they're like, everything you've said, you're doing it. You're mm. getting it done. And I am trying and will continue to be a serial manifester. Like, a serious I, I sit and I become it like why do you feel like manifestation is such a big topic now because I hear that word so much right um why do you think that is I think that people are waking up and understanding that they're it, it, they're powerful beyond measure yes yeah I think that people are waking up but what people a lot of people are, are just it, uh, we're using a word but are you really becoming what you're saying that you want to become? That's what we're talking about today. Like manifestation is not to me. I'm going to just give you my opinion. Um, but manifestation is not me just saying, hey, I'm going to have a podcast and I'm going I'm to I'm get a billion views. No, manifestation is I've already gotten a billion views. I've already saw it. I've wrote it. I've seen it. Like I've imagined it already. I've taken it. It's part of me. I walk like I've already gotten it. A lot of people are just are, – are, a lot of people are just saying, like, I'm, I'm going to manifest it, I'm going to manifest it. But I think manifestation has become a big deal because I think a lot of people are waking up. Like, it's always been a part of who we are. It's all, it's, we all are manifesting. We've been manifesting since little kids. It's manifestation habits? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Absolutely. So when I think about it, I think people are just... And I could be wrong. I think that when I read stories and I kind of figure out, okay, like... 90% of the world are not going to follow through with habits, right? So, like, is that just 90% of us are going to start the conversation about, I'm manifesting this, but we don't have the follow through. Like, we don't have the wherewithal, the know how, the consistency to show up. So, how does that, when you manifest, how do you actually make that? Because you are, I think, a person that I see. Um, that manifests but also makes things come to happen guys like like this is another thing like she's not going to say this i remember talking to her and she telling me that like she was going to have a store because it was this deadline in her date for her (laughs) birthday and i mean like you walked in in the gym on her birthday and here's the store and i'm like this woman like she's going to get it done um that's manifestation and actually making action i think there's a big gap if 90 percent of people aren't able to do that what is the What's the, what's the key? Like, give me the gem that makes it make sense for people. Uh, well, a lot of people won't be able to do that. I Why? mean, Why? Choices. I, we talked about this before. It's, okay. it's, it comes down to, to a choice. Like, you're either going to get it done or you're not. Like, people, people, people desire, they want this type of work ethic. They, they want this type of lifestyle that we have. But they don't understand it comes with literally beating on this craft every single day mm. 
And I'm talking about nonstop. And I'm not saying grind till you can't even get up off the floor, but it comes with a lot of work ethic. Mm -hmm. It comes with a lot of sacrifices. It comes with a lot of obedience. Um, a lot of times we don't want to do what we are called to do, mm -hmm. you know? But the obedience a part of it is what keeps us uh, in the follow through, right? right? So yeah, that's why a lot of people think about it. People can't even, people rather talk about, um, as soon as you give them a meal plan, they're like, oh, so there's no cheat meal? And you're just like, wait, what? Do you want it or you don't, right? And it's like, you just told me the goal you had, but you're already looking for a way out. Like we mm. either getting it or we not getting it. So I can be a little tough sometimes when it a comes little? to that. Well, because people ain't used to, a lot of people that meet people like me, we either doing it or we not doing it. Like it, it, it's, it's, it's either black or white, no gray areas. Mm. And I think that everybody's looking to be pampered. I'm not looking to nobody to pamper me. I want to manifest what I said I'm a manifest. What does that require? Cool. All right, during this period of time, this, this next quarter, I dedicate myself this next quarter. I got, a, I got a deadline. I got a timeline. Right. So this next quarter, I'm giving you all I got. I'm, I'm investing my time. I'm investing my money. I'm investing my energy. And whatever that looks like, I can't, I'm going to walk away saying, hey, in these three months, I did what I said I was going to do. Right. I, I put my hours in. I time blocked. I, I did everything I said I was going to do. So what's the results? So what happens in that quarter, let's say, for instance, that um, it doesn't come to fruition? How do you keep pushing? That's 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 part of the journey. Right. Right. But something came out of it. Right. So for me, I'm not going to call it call it a loss. I look at it. I evaluate it. And I say, OK, cool. We might didn't reach. I had a forecast of my first year reaching a million dollars in business. Right. Mm -hmm. OK. Came short of that. Right. So for me, I'm like, so what's the next forecast that I'm going to write out with my accountant and say, hey, I need to get to this goal. I need to get I need to I need to net this. So tell me what I got to do to get to this point. Right. And then so my, my first year, even my first year, I didn't reach me not reaching the goal. That doesn't count it as a loss. Right. What it counted as, man, we're in great route. And I looked and I looked because that was my forecast. That's what I wanted. Right. And do I keep going? Absolutely. Because I'm like, man, if I did this this year, imagine what I can do in the next five years. But I'm going to take I'm going to take quarter by quarter. Last year, I looked at the whole year. This year, I'm looking I'm working in my quarters. So I got four quarters of work. And I'm working each quarter. I'm an athlete. So this year I did something different. And I said, I'm gonna work, I got four quarters. I got game time. Right? And then like we finna go into halftime. We got summer, right? So for me, I said, I'm gonna break it up into four quarters. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna break it up into four quarters. Who gonna win the game? So it's me and my four quarters. I'm in it. And so my focus, it's not nobody else. It's just it's you versus yeah, you. Yeah. And so my thing is like I'm I'm really working my four quarters. I'm really focused on the fourth quarter. I'm in the second quarter right now. And uh, we up one. We you feel up me? one. We up one. I love it. And so my thing is, is that as long as I keep hitting, like you just said, if I got a deadline, I got to hit that deadline. Yeah. It might not be like you said about the store. It's not completely finished yet, but I bet you that store got started. It got up. It got up. Right. So we're doing good. We want up. No, you're definitely one up. You're one of the hardest critics on yourself too, though. I think, right? And Absolutely. that's good. I think that's good and that could be dangerous, right? So talk to me a little bit about how do you get out of your head when you're like coming, like who brings you back to say like, Drea, like you killing it, like you doing okay. Like, because that's sometimes, especially for somebody who is like you, who's self-realized, entrepreneurial, like you want to win the game and you're winning the game. But like, how do you find the balance, right? How do you find the balance from the standpoint of, am I going too hard on myself? Or is there such a thing? <laughs> no, it's not such a thing to okay. me. Um, to me. I think every day we wake up to win a day. Like I said, every day I wake up to, to, to play my, do my, give my best play. And so for me, am I in my head? Uh, sometimes I feel like I can, I can be a little hard on myself when it comes to like um, when I'm procrastinating. Mm. Yeah, I, I need to be on my own ass for sure. Right. Um, but when it comes to winning a game, uh, when it comes to showing up, no. I think I'm I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not. I, I would do this for the rest of my life. People always talk about retirement. When you retire, you find something else to do. Because if you really about who you say you are, and you're really about purpose and calling. This this till the day you die. So I signed like I. I committed my life to um, to my purpose and my calling. And so for me, nah, I, I never feel like 
Um, I'm too hard on myself. Do I need to get out of my head? No. I need to stay focused on the goal. That's it. And whatever that is, win the goddamn day. That's all I think about is win the day, win the week, win the month, like whatever it is that I have to do. But no, I don't. I, I'm not going to talk myself out of not being too hard on myself. Yeah. I give myself grace. Okay. Yeah, I care about giving myself grace, but no, I need to. I need to apply more pressure, actually. Well, let's talk a little bit about the grace and self-care, and let's talk a little bit about how mindfulness and what you talk about on a day-to-day basis, your business, your opportunity. You're in wellness. Like, mm-hmm. that's what you do. You help. I mean, for people who've seen me before now, like, I mean, I have to always say, like, this woman is the person that helped me get to my goals. You look great, by the way. Thanks. I mean, I have an amazing (laughs) trainer. Her name is Andrea. Follow her on Instagram. So anyways, uh, how do we like find that self-care routine? Right. For me, it was a struggle for a long time, especially owning a business. And then, um, you know, having conversations with people and telling me, okay, that wasn't the bad decision to go ahead and, you know, pivot and do different things um, because it opens you up to do these many things for self-care. And I'm like, that's true. Like, I didn't think about it that way. So what are some of your, you know, things that you're doing from self-care from an entrepreneurial standpoint? And what are some of the things that you feel like people who are running businesses on the day to day and are grinding every day? Like, how do they take time for themselves? So you you and I both know, um, and this is not my only business in my first business. So but this requires when I mean, you just start a brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. You really, you never really have time. But what I will tell someone that's just starting or in their business, and we've talked about this before as well, um, work the quarters. Mm -hmm. And every quarter, you work to a goal. And if you reach that goal, you reward yourself. Right. Right? Um, But every quarter is based off of reaching a goal. Right? So it's like you're rewarding yourself in each quarter with a trip. Maybe it'd be... I don't know, something that you need for yourself or something that is for you, though. Um, now I have, I've I've gotten back to time blocking, meaning if it's not in my time block, I don't do it. Um, I'm really strict with that. Yeah, she's now, like, not about to hang out with you if you're not in her time block. Like, <laughs> it's she, important. She's like, yeah, it doesn't happen like right now. <laughs> yeah, it's very important. I think time blocking is important because sometimes we start giving ourselves to, to people Mm-hmm. And um, we we really don't have it. Like, we don't have it to give. That's what I'm talking about, the grace. Like, I've learned how my boundaries are real. Like, mm-hmm. I put those boundaries up. It doesn't matter who you are. It, boundaries with my son, boundaries with my relationships, um, my partnerships, everything. Like, I have boundaries to where I'm like, dread is dread, too. Yeah. You know? And I think in the, in the beginning of in, in a business, your first three to five years, you – you ain't got really no time. You, you you're really, building yeah. a business. Yeah. And most and you don't businesses, know what you don't know either, right? You don't know mm-hmm. how much something is gonna take. Yep. And most and most businesses fail in their first year. Yeah. Most. So if you make your first year, congratulations. You you're doing good. If you make your first three years, really congratulations. Right. Because those first three years are the roughest years of probably as worst as bad as it's gonna get. Yeah. Um, to be to be honest, unless something unless you just just not working hard. But um, I I I personally believe that like um, you gotta have a lot of grace, but time blocking has been one of my best friends, and then also working on the rewarding system for mm-hmm. myself. That's my love offering that I give me, um, and it is something that I I've chosen to do. Um, hey, Dre, you reached this goal in these three months. You working your butt off, right? Because you can't. Sometimes in business, you'll be working, and then you look up in a year, you haven't done anything for yourself. I can't be like this weekend. I went to go have some time with some of my colleagues and who have offices that have maybe two or three. And that was the conversation at the Mm. table. Like I haven't done this in that amount of time. And I'm like, I get it. Like I totally get it. But these are people who have been in business for like several years. I'm like, so when is the reward coming? Right. Mm. And even I, I was mentioning this earlier too, like when I'm doing a procedure and like I'm just in it too much, I have to sometimes take a step back out because I'm looking at it from one lens. When I take mm. a step out and I'm like, okay, I got an extraction going, it's not going well. I'm like, what's what is up? Like I'm I'm trying to get this tooth out and I'm I'm not in the right like it this should come easy. I take mm. a moment to deglove, I take a moment to just breathe for a second. I may just walk the perimeter of my building and then I come back in and I'm like, 
within minutes this thing happens. And I'm like, mm. it's because I have a different opportunity to look. So I think that sometimes we don't think about rewards of being deserving of it, but we also need to think about rewards of thinking about the standpoint of, well, it, I have a fresh set of eyes to look at this mm. and I could be better for it if I get an opportunity to just take a step back. And that doesn't mean like everybody's reward system is different, right? Mm -hmm. Like. I'm going to hop on a plane. That doesn't mean that that's for everybody. But taking some form of self-care, I think, is important. And I think you do a lot of that as well, even on your days where you're like, this is not for anybody else but for me. Yeah, on Sundays. Right? Yeah, Sundays are my, my self-care days. And whatever that looks like, I, I don't want to be rushed. I want to do whatever I want to do, whether it be recovery, whether it's going to a movie. Whatever I want to do, I do it for myself. Um, and then Mondays, I also keep light as well because – um, I'm coming off the weekend, mm. and so my midday, um, I have time for things like this, like a podcast, or these are things that I do for like admin work, but also uh, for my personal, um, for my personal stuff too. So I try to keep that. I try to keep two days for myself. Yeah, yeah. So and then even on Saturdays when I leave the gym, you yeah. know, I go. I, as soon go. as I leave the gym, I go spend one hour with myself, one or two hours with myself at brunch. Yeah. And I usually sit by myself with myself. Unless sometimes I invite a friend, but for the most part, that's for me. That's for me to go over my whole week in my head. I don't really want to be talked to. And um, to see what I could have done better. And But everybody knows that. Everybody knows where I go every Saturday to where they're like, they can pull up. They're like, yo, yep, she's going to be there. I'm going to be there. <laughs> if I'm in Houston, I'm there. So one of the, I think, things again and as you can tell I have a lot of admiration for this woman um, but one of the things that I think about that you've inspired me to to do is also that quiet time mm -hmm. um, having that opportunity to just be you know by yourself and I didn't even I almost think that I felt hmm what's the word I want to say like <laughs> bad I, I felt almost like I I don't want to say didn't deserve it but you almost feel guilty mm. that's the word for wanting to take time to just be quiet um as an extrovert and you're an introvert extrovert right mm -hmm. so you're I'm both yeah for sure I'm probably more extroverted but I recognize like there are times where I'm like I don't and actually that's weekly now I don't want to talk to people like and not because I think that that's a bad thing. Now I had to give myself grace, but watching how you moved, I said, this woman takes the time that she's giving her freaking all on a Saturday. Like the class is intense. Sometimes she's even working out with us. She's talking shit throughout the whole entire class. <laughs> she's getting other people to talk shit. It's just a hot ass. Um, it's a hot ass amazing mess, right? Like in the best way possible. That's what we tell people when we invite them. We're like, yeah, you're going to die, and then you're going to be very happy that you died, and you're going to be the next day like, shit, I died, but it was a good, like, it was a good death. It was a good death. And I think about you and taking that time to yourself, and I hope that people know that, like, it's okay to have permission to be quiet when you're always on. The expectation is that you're always on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you give, as an introvert, I recognize how much energy you got to pour into people, but not only just getting them hyped up to work out, because let's break it down. You also have this mindset part where you're having us like be mm. all inspired and we're going to church for a little bit. We be at church, praise in Jesus, and then go on ahead and like stretch and hug your friends. Uh, say, say hello to your partner, like all of the things. Right. But. I recognize how much energy that takes. And so I think it's dope that you do have those boundaries. I think it's amazing that you've been able to time block, but you also have been able to identify yourself in understanding what you need. And I don't think enough of us, especially as entrepreneurs, um, do that, right? So I wanna thank you for that because I think that that's been something that I've been able to take even here recently. And I'm just like, no, I I can say that's no to you. that. Yeah, like yeah. that's for me and, and it's okay to be quiet, right? I like to fill a room with with noise, but it's okay. Yeah, and you yeah. shouldn't. I never negotiate it. Yeah, yeah, that, I it's like never that. negotiated. All right, so now let's get into this last part of the segment, or excuse me, the second part to the last part of the segment, where I want to talk about because your health and wellness, because you own a gym, and for people who are not able to move forward, like physically, right? Talk to me about the impacts of being physically active on your mental space and your mindset space? Like, what do you feel like are the pros to it when you are setting up, you setting yourself up for success? 
Repeat that question again. What are the so, pros to setting myself up for success this? with being physically active uh -huh. and, and the impact it has on like your mindset as well as like your day to day operations? Like, right? Yeah, I think I'm gonna reverse it. Right? Okay. I, what's I wanted to people to know that what success looks like is one, changing your mindset first, and then your body will follow, mm. because whatever we whatever we think about. And it doesn't matter if you have a beautiful body or not. It, it's still toxic in terms, it's so much stuff going on in it. So what I would do is reverse that, what you just talked about. Okay. And I'm, it, it starts in the mind first. So my pillars that I live off of, and that's why when you walk into the gym, that's why it's all about the mental space. That's why I break it down. That's why we have a med meditation. Um, that's why we actually walk around and we introduce ourselves because we've forgotten about community. I care about community. Mm -hmm. And it's about breaking bread with those that are around us and being um, come, coming together. Like we, we don't, we've gotten away from, I need you, but I know I really need you, yeah. you know, um, because we all think that we can do it on our own. We can't. So let's talk about the mental spark part and then the body will follow like in real, in real time, in real life. Because mentally, I don't care what anybody say. I don't care who you are until it clicks there. You, you, you will forever go into a gym, give yourself a week, and then fall off the following week. And I think you just hit, like, that's a million-dollar statement, like a billion-dollar statement. I think if more gyms focused on the mindset, before you even got started with the workout, you'd see huge changes. Yeah. I, people have come to my gym, and they have... They on Saturdays because I only do it once a week, but they hate some hate it, some love it. But what I realized about that is, is that I'll never change it. And the reason is because eventually you understand why I'm doing yeah. it, because the majority of our people, like we talked about at the beginning, committing suicide. Um, they are in the mental, in an unstable space mentally. Yeah. And so we don't know until we talk about it. People have been afraid. They're, they're, everybody's looking like they, they're doing good, but what if what if we not? What if what if what if you're not? What if you and we can feel the energy in the room. And what I love about Saturdays is that everybody's an intention is everybody's intent is there to get something that day. Everybody comes with this energy. Think about it. Every Saturday, even when you invite somebody, I've made Saturday so special mm -hmm. that even when you invite somebody. It's almost like you got to come on a Saturday, yeah, though. You do. And they say, why well, Saturday? Right? Most and y'all, like, I want to tell y'all also, too, what she does so that, like, y'all know, like, it's a it's a real thing. Like, Mike, I'm looking at you like, this is a real thing. She <laughs> locks her doors. Y'all, we get up at at during the week. If her class starts at 515, I'm up at 430. It's I do hit the snooze at 440, which is why I'm always speeding. And I'm, like, going 100 miles an hour to get there. But Stop that's, doing it. I know, right? But it's like that 10 minutes matters so much. Um, we, You have people coming in droves. I've never seen people come on a Saturday and, like, <laughs> will be out at 630. That means that you cannot kick it on Friday because you're not trying to miss Saturdays. Like, that's how special you've made that. Like, it's amazing if you think about it, right? I mean, I know you see it every Saturday, but, like, as a person that, like, goes to gym, I'm just like, she didn't really, like, made people, like, change their whole flow. Yeah. Because I, I think when you have something amazing like that, you have something good, people will follow yeah. good shit. And I think that it's only a matter of time that people will continue to follow it. Um, because I haven't done any real marketing yet. I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Um, only marketing I've done is through my members, is through my referrals. I don't, I don't run ads. I have not done not one thing yet, not one, because I want that gym as special as it can be. And the best thing they said, the best, the best, best um, compliment. Uh, com right, but you, you can finish. You want to say it? No, you got go it. Go ahead, go ahead. Best compliment is referrals. Is referrals. Word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth. Because if I tell you you got to come to my gym, I'm going to give you the rundown. Like, girl, it is da 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 da, yeah. da. And you're going to be looking for that experience. But if you see it online, if I'm running an ad, it's fluffed up, right? And I don't want nobody to come. Nothing fluffed up. I want you to come to the real experience. I mm -hmm. want you to know. And if Simone tells you and if Dre tells you and if XYZ tells you, you know. Because that's your girl or that's your boy. And if they like it, I know I'm going to like it, Right. 
And so, so usually, that's the Drea's secret sauce. It's like making sure that it's amazing so that people talk about it. It, it listen, it, right now we can we can go into we can go in, we can go any we can go to any place right now and it can be an amazing experience. But consistency and and, and what it takes every Saturday, I tell people I'm not gonna miss. If I'm in that room, I'm not missing. My goal is is to make sure that um, I prepare myself just as well as you guys do on a Saturday to make sure. And so somebody might die, oh, that's real intense, but that's how intentional I am. Talk about your preparation. So Fridays, we, you, we y'all know. I mean, even with y'all, we even when we go eat, we go eat early. Yep. If I'm with friends, we we go kick it early. If I don't do it that way, I'm I'm be miserable, it's right? A horrible Things workout. are different. <laughs> yeah. So um, I say all that to say, my preparation is is that um, that. I, I usually shut down the gym on Fridays early. I go, I do a deep clean because um, Saturdays are special for me. And the reason why I do a really deep clean on Fridays is because I want the energy clear. Um, I care about when it's, there's nothing like coming to a good, clean home and it's fresh and smell good. Mm. It makes you just feel like. <sighs> so, guys, that's the first thing she's talking about, which is preparing. She's anticipating her day. She's not walking into her day. And it's haphazardly done. Like she's intentionally preparing the day before, right? Yes. Um, Every Saturday I prepare for a packed house. I see it. That's what I talked about with manifestation. It's Mm -hmm. about um, it's already done. It's happened already. Um, And so um, my sister shared this with me. She said it's crazy because the hype haven't died down yet. And she said that lets you know, and you have not done any marketing. You haven't put any money, real money, into your marketing besides referrals. She said, I cannot wait till you put your money and into you marketing. And you close down Saturdays to, like, now it has to be, you know somebody. It's like a whole exclusive oh, yeah. vibe. Like So on Saturdays, yeah, now it's, um we yeah, if you if you don't know anybody, you can't get in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's members only invite on Saturdays because yeah. that's how special it is. And I remember you talking about that and now to see that four or five months later, like, that's dope. But I had members like yourself and others that kind of helped that, right? Because you guys became more like, this is special. Like, you guys start sharing, like, this is special. Like, I want this to be something that, like, I want to share this with, like, my people, people. Right. And when you have just randoms just want to come in just to take a picture, it's a different vibe. So when you have someone that, like, yourself or, like, me or whatever, and if I invite you, I want you to know how intentional this day mm-hmm. is. Like, I promise you it's going to set your whole weekend up. Like, and I know people are coming in there with that type of, um, those hopes. Like, man, I'm, I'm man, we're going to be lit this weekend. Yeah. Like, we're going to go into the week on – I can do anything, you yeah. know. And when you when we're all working out, it's such good energy, such good energy. You don't even know that you're dying. Everybody in there dying. We sweat all it's, over the place. No, it's like go back to guys. Go back to her IG. There's a story that I think is hilarious where it's like real smoke and it looks so fake. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It it's looks so fake. fake, but I'm like, no, like that's like she's literally smoking. Yeah, like she's super she's dope. that hot. Like but everybody was in the gym smoking. Dying. And she's she can be a jerk. She turns off the air. It's like, wait, like everybody is coming out their clothes. I'm just like, we but it's, you get results. I mean, and speaking personally yeah, on from the floor, it, like, I cut the air off. I only cut the air on. Especially because now I'm you can't up. drink water. It's just No, like, you can drink you water. Don't say not. that. No, you like can't drink water on the floor. It's like this whole shit. Well, not on the floor. You get the the kid no, no, not only the that, cubicles she's like, are like she's, walking she's, distance. She's roasting you oh. if you're going to get water like yeah I say water make you weak and you're just like no actually it's called hydration and like <laughs> I need it because I'm dying but say less yeah uh, no I what you've created has been awesome and I think even the gems that you're dropping now are really really mindful so like you're preparing before you get there right and we talk about that I talk about that a lot like how many times do people just rush into their days and if they would stop doing that how much more effective would be going back to habits, right? Absolutely. Going back to manifestation. So all that keys in. Um, so you make sure your your space is clean. You're making. I didn't know that about the energy part, but that's dope. Yeah, because it's it's um, imagine. So if if you're having a party at your house right now, you're gonna make sure it's clean, right? Yeah. You're gonna clean it from top to bottom. You want people to come in and feel good, like right? when they sit down. You want them to. I never thought about it though. From what. It's an energy. Yeah. yeah. You, you, I you, mean, that's that's a fair. So this is where. I, so I walk. I go into a hotel, really, really expensive hotel, and on each hallway, um, and I'm not saying names because they ain't paying me, so no plug. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, no plug. No, no, uh, no ads. No ads. 
<laughs> and pay me if you no, want no, me to. I'll mention you on the next the one. The price just went up. <laughs> Anyways, but no, um, I, I walked on each, like when, when you're in, in this hotel, the the smell was different on, in each part of the hotel. And oh, it, it really, it really lo- like luxury hotels, you can tell like in the spas different and different, different, um, like it depends a, where your room's at. Right. Different smells, right? Also, like if you rich, when rich. you first when you rich, rich, that smell different, <laughs> right? Because they want you to break bread. They want you to spend money. Mm. Hear me out. So, um, they have this ventilation system, like this air freshener that's in your vents, in the vents. Yeah, scent air. Scent, boom, Love right? It. Yeah. Hear me out. Okay. So these certain these smells is what's gonna make you spend certain money, like money. Right, it makes you buy. I didn't know that. It makes you per- like it makes because you, you're like, mm. right? Hear so me does out. this smell rich, guys? Girl, worthless, wealthy. <laughs> listen, listen. Oh, it listen. smells expensive. I'm telling you, they're gonna be coming in. by listen, <laughs> listen. As soon as I light this candle, drop these coins. <laughs> drop these coins. Watch Saturday is a wrap. I'm lighting the candles. Oh I'm, I'm I'm inviting you know, myself. I'm gonna go back my and buy me one. I need to. Doors are now open <laughs> to all. But real talk. So the smells, like yeah. no, knowing that, I was like, man, it's all about the, it's all about the presentation. It's all yeah, about yeah. like when you walk into the hotel, it was all about customer service. It's about um, even Tyson knew it sounds rich. Come on, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> but when you walk in. We, you, you get a good morning, you get a smile, you yeah. get, hey, how you doing? Um, you get all of that, right? Um, you have, um, and then so the, the, all that stuff matters. And when you walk into the gym, what I cons- consistently hear is, it always smells so good up in here, mm. you know? And we stink. Like, like we don't stink, horribly. we stink. Yeah, like I know if. correct English, I'm just not gonna do that. <laughs> but we stink, right? And so being able to be in a space to and and the reason why I'm bringing all that up is that I'm being intentional about even that part, mm-hmm. and so I think that preparation, having walking into it's walking to it with preparation, um, having clear intentions of what you're trying to give the people, right, and execution, and because if you show up, it's about executing and applying ap- application as well. So for me, um, it's all about the execution too, because on Saturday morning, people are showing up to get an experience. Mm-hmm. And so if I um during the week it's great it's a they, it's great workouts it's amazing workouts but Saturdays I told you has been my points to where people get to see the pillars of the gym. And so I think those three things um about um about really being intentional being execution um and being in preparation towards the looking forward to a successful Saturday. Um, or a successful day is important, and I think that if we do that every day, um, leads up to a good week. Man, leads up to a good everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also understand that everything is happening for us and not to us. Yeah. And so being in that space as well, and opening ourselves up to to whatever it is that the universe wants to give us. And I don't believe in us. We don't lose at all. I don't care what the day looks like. I do not take my day as a loss. I don't care if I didn't hit a number. I don't care if a member canceled. I don't. I look at it as what's next? Mm. What's next? What do I got to do next? So tighten your belt. One leave, three come. Let's go, right? One mm. leave, three come. Every time. So three my number. Y'all know that. R3. I love it. I was yeah, gonna one ask leave, you, three come. I was going to ask you what would either manifest, oh, that's another part of our part, manifestation or mantra, <laughs> but I mean, you've done so many. So like, mm. do you have one that you want people to know? Like, I know that leave your mark is your mantra. That's what we'll call that. And you've talked about manifestation. Is there one that you feel like you need people to know that's just connected to you? And that, maybe that's not it. even connected to the gym, but just like you, who you are as a woman. Leave, leave your mark leave every your day. Mark. Okay. I love if, it. And Mark left, like it, it, you start off leave with that mantra, leave your mark every day. Yeah. Um, it's not even about just the gym. It's about anything, about this podcast, about you starting a new project, about whatever it may be. Yeah. Just leave your mark in it. And at the end of the, your day, if you can make that check that list off and say, Mark, love, job well done. Well, anybody who's been blessed to know you know that you always leave your mark. Always. Absolutely. So. Okay, fun time. Let's go to my rapid fire questions because oh this is God. the last bit. So I'm scared. You should be. Okay, so let's go. Sex or chocolate? Wait. <laughs> I like to start off with. Wait, that. wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? <laughs> Sex or chocolate? Sex or chocolate? Sex. Um, Tyson <laughs> or Holyfield? Tyson. Of course, right? Uh, tequila or whiskey? T- 
tequila. Beach or land? Land. Okay. Um, hot or cold? Hot. Um, positive or negative? Positive. Optimism or skepticism? Optimism. Hope or joy? Kind of both. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, uh, joy. Um, white or black? Black. Everybody know I wear black everywhere. You do wear black everywhere. That's yeah. your thing? Huh? A little pop of red sometimes. I mean, they say most geniuses wear black, so. Oh, is that what we're. Yeah, because we don't that. have time to think about other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, a Nike or Adidas? Uh, Nike. Serena or Venus? Serena. Michael or Michael? Michael, Michael Jordan or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. Um, favorite Whitney Houston song? Oh my God! All of them. I'm a vibe. I'm a. She's a vibe. She doesn't. I'm all things Whitney. Don't. She don't miss. She never missed. Um, ever. And last one, Beyonce or Kelly? Oh who? <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce. Hey Beyonce. Hey, Shout Beyonce. out to B. Shout out to B. Well, I want to thank you so much for spending an hour of your time with me. I appreciate it. Um, for people who want to know where they can find you, what's next? No, we didn't do that part. Let me just ask that last question. What's next for you? What's uh, next for you? So I have redid my business plan. And what's next for me is that um, a new gym is coming. Um, a better innovation of what you see now is coming. Branding is coming. Marketing is coming. Um, refuel is about to grow. Mm. Um, and um, what's next for me is just more innovation, more more of my ideas being created and put out into the world. And um, you guys will see it when it happens because I don't know what God has in store. But what I can tell you is there's a lot of things being worked on in the background. But, yeah, bigger increase of territory for sure. Got it. Um, but I say this on camera. Um, what I'm looking forward to is having, and I've said this, but I've already said that I've, um, at first I said, I want gyms all around the world. And now I just, I've picked my cities that I only want to play off three. I want three gyms in each one of those cities that I've written down. Um, and that's, that's my goal. So we're working on our second one here in Houston. And um, I just want three. That's oh. it. R3. Because that's your number. That's my number. Right. So R3. So yeah, that's what's next is a new location. Love that. Love that. Where can people find you? Um, or where do you not want people to find you? Don't ever find me. <laughs> Don't look for me. I'm not accessible to you. Don't anyone. pull up on her burn spot. Oh, you better not pull up. You, you, I would look through you. Look at you through my window. Where can people find you on social media? Yeah, uh, just my name, Andrea Everline, on all platforms. A N D R E A, Everline should be on the screen. Um, but Andrea Everline on all platforms: TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Andrea Everline. If you're looking for the gym, just put in R3 Fuel and all of the refuel patches will come up. Love it. But we're in the space of creating with refuel, so it's not tons of content. But Andrea Everline got a lot of content. Oh, that definitely has a lot of content. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Guys, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your time for an hour. This is Beyond the Chair, Dr. Simone Ellis, and I have been had a this has been a great episode. Like really. Oh, absolutely. Like I if think you I, don't I think I did too good, but Um, I mean you're kind of your own worst critic, so that sounds right. That she would be thinking that she And I got my money candle. I mean, I light this thing. <laughs> y'all should have come in. Those that's been looking from the outside, I look forward to seeing y'all soon. I love it. Because I'm about to light the candle. <laughs> Thanks, Promise you that. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. Bye, guys.